What's up guys, Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. So in this video, I'm going to put the new Nokia 7.2 through a series of tests to find out exactly what this smartphone is capable of. Now my tests will include disk speeds, Wi-Fi, GPS, DRMs, benchmarks, some gaming, some camera shots, and we'll finish off with my top smartphone chart of 2019 to see how this phone ranks with the other top devices. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, we are gonna begin with a boot up speed test. The smartphone is totally off and I got my timer behind. So here we go. One, one, two, three. So as soon as I felt the vibration, the timer goes on. So let's see how long it takes. So it did take 30 seconds to boot up this smartphone. So we are gonna test out the speeds of the internal storage. Here we go. So here are your results, read speeds 279 and write speeds 182. So here is the DRM information. This does support Google Widevine level one, which means we do have support for Netflix in HD quality. Now in YouTube, you can stream a maximum of 1080p at 60 frames per second. Moving on to the Wi-Fi speed test. So five gigahertz, first of all, we achieved download speeds of 65 and upload speeds of 18 megabits per second. Now running the test again on a two gigahertz Wi-Fi network. And we achieved a download speed of 23 and upload speed of 18 megabits per second. So a quick look at CPU-Z, you can see we've got the Snapdragon 660, it's an octa-core CPU clocked at 2.21 GHz and we do have the Adreno 512 and if we click on device you can see the model Nokia 7.2 Daredevil and under system we have Android version 9 and no root access from default. So now we're going to do a quick indoor GPS test. So this is an indoor GPS test, and as you can see, we are able to obtain a fix fairly quick. So decent GPS in this device. So moving on to the gaming test, and we are beginning with Asphalt 9. So the next game we are going to test is, of course, my favorite, Call of Duty Mobile. Now let's test out the fingerprint sensor. It is located on the back, easy to reach, and it unlocks the smartphone accurately, but with a second or two delay. 
So not the fastest fingerprint sensor I have ever seen, but it does do the job okay. Now this smartphone also supports face unlock. So let's put it on the table and we're gonna test out the face unlock feature. So it took two or three seconds to actually register the face and unlock itself. Let's do it again. So yeah, it's quite a slow face unlock. I'm, all, I'm also gonna pick it up and try it to see if that makes a difference. So you do have a slow fingerprint sensor, but an even slower face unlock. So now we're gonna do a quick sound test. So no stereo speakers, just a single speaker at the bottom. Now let's talk about the cameras. We have a triple camera set up on the back with a 48 megapixel primary, 8 megapixel telephoto and a 5 megapixel depth sensor. And on the front we have a 20.1 megapixel selfie camera and that is located on the teardrop notch. And a quick look at the camera app, you will see pro mode, portrait, regular photo and video mode and you also have a night mode. Now if we go back to photo mode, quickly show you what the widescreen lens looks like. So that's your widescreen lens and that's available on both photo and video mode. Now if you have a look at settings you can shoot a maximum of 4k video from the rear facing camera and 1080p video from the front facing camera. And if we check out photo resolution you can shoot a maximum of 48 megapixels from the rear camera and 20 megapixels from the front facing camera. So we do have quite a feature packed camera and here are a few sample shots for you guys to check out. Does look quite good look on the screen. So 4K at 30 frames per second with the rear facing camera. So here is a quick 4K video sample with the ultra wide. Again, we'll test out the image stabilization very briefly. It is very windy today. So do expect a lot of wind noise. So this is the ultra wide camera 4K at 30 frames per second. So this is 1080p video with the front facing camera. It's freezing cold. I can't help it. Got my full jacket on with the hoodie. And this is what you can expect in terms of front facing video quality. So now we are shooting 1080p video with the front facing camera. And it's freezing cold out here, I tell you right now. And apparently we do have image stabilization. And we'll see how that turns out soon. So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with Geekbench single core of 338 and multi-core score of 1482. 
and in the Antutu benchmark test we achieved 167k. So let's see how this compares with the others. So here is my top performing smartphone chart for 2020 and as you can see the Nokia 7.2 has taken position 15 on this chart with a benchmark score of 167k. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was my hands-on speed test of the new Nokia 7.2. Now this is how I see it. The build quality is actually very nice. You have a combination of metal, plastic and Gorilla Glass 3 and I really like the matte finish on the back. The phone does feel quite premium, slim and light in the hands. On the front you do have bezels on the sides and a small chin to go with it and a tiny water drop notch at the top. Overall design and aesthetics is quite good. Performance wise it's a Snapdragon 660 which gives a decent mid-range performance and combine that with Android 1 which is version 9 Pi stock Android experience and it simply flies on this smartphone. And you also have the bonus of Android 10 which should be coming soon for this handset. Gaming on the Nokia 7.2 was great. I could play more or less any game from the Play Store on medium to high settings with no issues at all. Now let's quickly talk about the camera. This device takes amazing photos with both the front and rear cameras. Also you can shoot 4K video and the quality leaves you a little underwhelmed especially due to lack of image stabilization. But nevertheless it's still good enough in its mid-range class. Now you have a single speaker which produces loud and clear sound and the overall quality is not bad. Battery life is actually very decent. You can achieve a day of medium to heavy usage with around four to five hours of on-screen time and a 10 watt fast charger is included in the box. Now let's talk about the extras. There is no IP rating or wireless charging but we do have a headphone jack, NFC and a micro SD card slot. Bottom line, the Nokia 7.2 offers a premium design and a pretty decent performance at a mid-range price of under £300. You're getting a great user experience with Android 1 and a decent camera which excels in the photo department but not so much in the video department and also not a great wide angle lens. This is a true mid-ranger and it does well in nearly all the categories that we tested. Overall I rate this smartphone an 8 out of 10. Do let me know what you guys think of this smartphone in the comments below. Meanwhile thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.